So this is my hand feeding formula. <coughs> I normally keep a big batch in the fridge or the freezer. This is a small batch that we keep out. This is your working batch. I'm gonna be feeding three chicks. So it's my hand feeding formula. I personally add a bit of spirulina. You don't have to. Hand feeding formula is complete. So now I'm gonna get my hot water. So I have two tubs. One is a water bath to make sure that the formula stays at the proper temperature. Um, and this is gonna be for adding to that. So I have a instant hot water tap, but it's like 150 degrees, so it's too hot. bit high but not too bad so this is from my hot water tap you can nuke water in the microwave you must mix it well before adding to the formula because there will be hot spots oh wait hey so it's 180 coming out of my tap which is super hot so what I'm gonna do is add a little bit of hot water mix it and then add a little bit of cool water to bring the temperature down we are shooting for about 106 degrees. Can't be hotter than 110. Let's see. Sorry if I'm going off camera, I'm going to my tab. So, get some clump here. Come on. It'll thicken up a bit over time. You want it to be about the consistency of applesauce. So let's check our temperature. Looks like it might be a bit too cold. Yeah, it's too cold now. Too much. Just a wee bit more formula. It's a balancing game. And you just kind of learn over time how much you need of what. It's 104. Four is good. It's a little bit on the low end. It's better to start a little hotter. So this is, see it drips down, but it's still pretty thick. So we're going to put this in the water bath. That keeps it warm. However, this is at a higher temperature than this. So it can heat up the formula. So you got to check it again before you feed it. Ideally, you want this to be at around 110. That way this will not overheat. So I'm going to grab my babies. They stay in the brooder until I'm ready to feed. That way they're nice and warm. I'm feeding two different clutches here. This guy's from one clutch. These guys are from another clutch. So I feed solo baby first. So I don't want to cross contaminate between him and the others. So this is now at 107, 108. Let's see how high it is. Okay, that's not bad. Can't be above 110. It will cool off a little bit. 
when you put it in the syringe. So, there's my baby. I don't know if you can see or not. There we go. I have another video with a close-up of feeding, so if you can't see, I should have another video. If the formula is warm enough, you should get a nice feeding response like this where they have a pumping action. Some species like Indian ringnecks don't have a super cool pumping action. I actually prefer to spoon feed those guys. You want to feed from the bird's left to the right. You're aiming towards the esophagus, which is on the right side. So you want to aim over the trachea to the esophagus. You don't want to jet it towards the trachea. So, this is baby. Don't want to overfeed. This one's taking about three cc's, two and a half, three cc's per feed. Checking my formula again. Where are you at? Too hot now. One oh eight, we're okay. Alrighty. Using a different syringe for the other two. And you'll notice this has started to thicken up. pumping action. The older bubs pump quite a bit at first and then they go slow. Yes. Yes, you do. I don't know if you can see. Oh, I can't. Let me hold this guy up to the camera. If you see on the side of his beak, he's got these little puffy things. Little like fleshy spots. When the mom or dad grabs on to feed, they rub the little puffy spots and it can stimulate the feeding response. Usually you see this more in soft bills. Some of them actually have like landing pad type colors. I believe Gouldian finches have like neon colors on the side of their beak. It helps the parents see their beak in the nest and grab on. But you can tickle the side of the beak. Not right now. You're not doing it, but to uh, elicit a feeding response as well. Slow eater. A slow eater. And we're cleaning as we go. Because we don't want this stuff to turn into cement on your face. And your crop looks nice and full, so. Nice full crop. All right. Check you again. Right at 110. I feed when it's about 110 because by the time it actually gets into the baby, it's quite a bit lower usually. He's a dribble. Yeah. Cockatiels have an insanely strong feeding response. Like they'll knock a syringe out of your hand. These guys aren't too bad. Now, it can take them a while to register that they're actually full. 
particularly that little one will cry for a little bit after being fed. If you have a bird that's crying all day, every day, that's a bad sign. That means you're probably underfeeding it or there's something else wrong. I can hear my African greys having sex in the other room. Lay some more eggs, dudes. All right, that's it, those are my babies. These are green cheek coniers. 